problem two reads, a catapult throws a 10 kilogram stone with a speed of 40 meters per second at an angle of elevation of 50 degrees above the horizontal. If the stone is released from a point two meters above the ground, A, what maximum height does the stone reach? And B, if the stone just clears a castle wall 12 meters high, what is the speed of the stone as it goes over the wall? Let's take a look at that catapult in action. The stone is launched, it rises, descends, and just clears a castle wall. The information that's given about the stone is that it has a mass of 10 kilograms, it has a speed of 40 meters per second when it is launched at an angle of 50 degrees above the horizontal, and it is two meters above the ground at the point where it is launched. The first question we're asked about the stone is what is its maximum height? Say what is H? And then what is the speed of the stone when it just clears the castle wall? Okay, that is the problem. Try to solve that problem now before watching its solution. Here is a figure displaying the data for the problem. When the stone is released, it has a height which we'll call H1 of 2 meters above the ground. It has a velocity V1 of 40 meters per second at an angle of 50 degrees above the horizontal. When it is at its maximum height, we'll call that height H2. That's unknown in one of the questions in the problem. At that maximum height, the stone will not have any vertical component of its velocity and its velocity will simply be equal to the horizontal component of its velocity. That horizontal component of its velocity, 40 cosine 50 degrees, is simply the original horizontal component of the velocity which does not change. If we calculate what that is, that turns out to be 25.7 meters per second. When the stone goes over the castle wall, its height above the ground, H3, is 12 meters, and its velocity at that point, V3, is also unknown. If we apply the conservation of mechanical energy to this problem, we would find that the kinetic energy at point one plus the potential energy at point one is equal to the kinetic energy at point two plus the potential energy at point two, which in turn is equal to the kinetic energy at point three plus the potential energy at point three. Let's use the data at point one to calculate the sum of the kinetic and potential energy at that point. And if we do that, the kinetic energy 1 is equal to 1 half 10 kilograms times 40 meters per second that quantity squared plus the 10 kilogram mass times G 9.8 meters per second per second multiplied by H1, which is 2 meters. And if you work through that calculation, you find that this is 8,000 joules plus 196 joules for a total of 8,200 joules. Now by the conservation of energy, the kinetic energy at point two plus the potential energy at point two will also be equal to that total 8,200 joules. So let's set it equal. One half the 10 kilograms times V2, which we determined to be 25.7 meters per second squared plus 
10 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second per second multiplied by H2 must be equal to 8200 joules. The only unknown in this equation is H2 and if you solve for that H2 turns out to be 50 meters. All right, that is the maximum height. Now we can do the same thing at point 3 and say that the sum of the kinetic energy at point 3 plus its potential energy at point 3 is also equal to the 8200 joules. So let's do that. The kinetic energy, 1 half, 10 kilograms times V3, which is unknown, squared, plus the mass, 10 kilograms, times 9.8 meters per second per second times H3 which was 12 meters must be equal to the total 8200 joules. If we solve this for V3 and you should check this solution V3 turns out to be 37 0.5 meters per second. That then is the velocity of the stone as it goes over the castle wall. We have found that the maximum height of the stone is 50 meters. That's the solution then to problem number two. Let's move on now to problem number three.